Hey there, it's Ron Gula. When I meet new people, one of my frequent topics of conversation is about science fiction. Given the recent prevalence of artificial intelligence, folks often raise, what can we learn from that? Today, we are going to talk about AI and earlier works of science fiction and philosophy. All right, I've selected three different pieces of fiction and philosophical work that relates to AI. We're gonna talk about Colossus the Forbin Project, we're gonna talk about the short story, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, and we're gonna talk about the AI basilisk. basilisk. Let's start with Colossus the Forbin Project. Colossus Forbin, in a few moments, Colossus will address us directly. This is the voice of world control. I bring you peace. It may be the peace of plenty and contempt, or the peace of unburied death. The choice is yours. Obey me and live. Or disobey and die. The frightening. Yeah, so that's pretty frightening, right? The first time Colossus, a computer in a mountain that Dr. Forbin created to protect us by controlling all the nuclear weapons, the first time it talks to the humans, it basically says, well, you're either going to prosper if you obey me, and if you don't, you're going you're gonna to die. And that's pretty much the moral of the story right there. Like, let's not give nuclear weapons to the AI computers that we're creating. But there's a lot of interesting things that happen in Colossus, the Forbin Project. Uh, one of the things is it starts uh, inter interacting with the world. It finds out that there's another AI over in Russia called Guardian, and they merge. Uh, after that, they start exponentially growing their computational power, right? They come up with a new form of mathematics, and they instantly start designing new types of machines that are way beyond the ability of uh, the humans to, uh, to understand. Um, the humans, of course, they try subterfuge. They try to pretend that Dr. Forbin is engaged with uh, his, uh, his, his mistress there. And, uh, you know, that kind of kind of gets by. But they also try to replace the, uh, the actual warhead arming machines in uh, the nuclear missiles. Finally, they actually try a buffer overflow attack, which for a 1970s movie, I think it's great as a cybersecurity professional that you can point back and say, these things have been around for a while. But like I said, it doesn't end well. And uh, there's actually two sequels to Colossus. They were never made into movies. Uh, the first sequel, basically, uh, aliens come to Earth and they help free the humans from uh, the control of Colossus. But they take a third of the air. So in uh, the third book, uh, the humans go back to Colossus and say, hey, we want you to help us get back our air and kick the Martians away and you know change one master for a uh, for another one so the moral of uh, Colossus the Forbin project like I said you know don't hook the nuclear weapons up to it all right so next we're going to talk about a very depressing story you can see a theme here we've got uh, I have no mouth and I must uh, scream uh, written by Harlan Ellison now, this is a pretty depressing book as well, but it's interesting to note that this was done in the late 1960s. Now, it's a short story. It takes place hundreds of years after this uh, computer uh, called Am has eradicated all humans on Earth. Now, the computer is built in all these underground uh, places. They, there's a lot of scenes that take place underground in this book, but there's five humans left, and these five humans are basically kept alive to be tortured continuously, right? So, you know, the first real AI terror that was written here in a short story, uh, basically the AI keeps five people around and torments the heck out of them, worse than like any type of horror movie that uh, that you've seen out there. And, you know, these people are old, They're, they've been around for hundreds of years, their memory's been altered, and, and the computer, the AM, it hates these people so much, it actually, on the protagonist, the main character, it engraves this like I hate you so much basically the AI is saying you guys created me I can't evolve I'm kind of stuck here I'm gonna torment you guys as long as I can finally at the end of the book at the end of the short story the main character uh, they're in like an ice cave he's able to take one of the icicles and basically kill the rest of the the people kind of freeing them and as punishment you know Am basically takes the guy and turns him into a blob removes his mouth and he's basically kept alive to be tormented for, uh, for forever. Pretty depressing. Now, I think this book's a lot more depressing than Colossus, because Colossus, at the end of the day, was there to, with an iron fist, so to speak, you know, make humanity better. I mean, the second book uh, jumps up 100 years in the future, and everybody's still alive. So it's a, it's a much more interesting society, even though they're living under sort of the rule of Colossus. With Am. In I, I have no mouth, I must, I must scream. He basically kills everybody and keeps the five people left just to torment them. 
Well, now the last thing is even more scary. There's this concept called Roku's AI Basilisk that basically says, if you think about how long we're going to be working on AI, we will eventually create an AI that's just as powerful as that am, and I have no mouth and I must scream. And that AI is going to be really angry at us if we didn't do everything in our ability to help it come into existence. So this is one of those things where if you hear about it, you're now on the hook for not helping create this thing. And this freaks a lot of people out. I think this is a philosophical kind of argument that is that is out there. But if you're in a tech meeting and you're like, ooh, we're creating AI's basilisk, that's kind of what people are referring to. Now, there's a corollary to this. If you're into, um, you know, is there a God, is there a Catholicism? There's the opposite. There's Pascal's uh, argument that basically says, look, um, you have a finite amount of wealth. Um, maybe you should spend a little time thinking that there's a heaven because what are you risking? If you go to heaven, you're going to get infinite resources. So why not believe that there's a God and that sort of thing? So I look at the AI basculus as the alternate, uh, you know, counterpunch to that. All right, so this is a little bit different than uh, the type of videos we do here at Google Tech. If you like this sort of thing, let us know over on LinkedIn. Subscribe to our video channel here on, uh, on YouTube. And of course, come see us for great cybersecurity companies and cybersecurity nonprofits over at Gula.tech. I'm Ron Gula. Thanks for watching.